please welcome John Finnimore. So now I wonder, does anyone remember the news of the world? <laughs> Do you remember that? It was, it was a newspaper that was around when I was a kid and an adult. Uh, it was a, a tabloid that came out on Sunday. It was a bit like the sun on Sunday, but obviously totally different and separate and not the same thing at all. <laughs> Anyway, I seem to remember it, uh, it closed in the end, I think after some scandal about hacking a murdered schoolgirl's phone. Um, and it was a News International paper, I think, so it's a, it's a good job it's not around this week when the government and Ofcom have to decide if News International are fit and proper persons to own B Sky B. <laughs> but it's not, it's closed and over and done and finished and in the past and not relevant to anything anymore. <laughs> Which is lucky. Now, I'm aware, as I, as I start this piece, uh, of something that Tom Lehrer once said about protest song singers, that uh, it takes a certain amount of courage to get up in a coffee house and come out in favour of the things everyone else is against, like peace and love and brotherhood and so on. <laughs> I feel a bit like that now. Here I am on Radio 4 to register my controversial view that listening to and or deleting messages from the phones of murder victims, terrorist survivors or dead soldiers is a bit off. <laughs> even when it's done by a newspaper that totally doesn't exist anymore. <laughs> I mean, that is very much my opinion, but I just fear I might be preaching to the choir a little bit. And what a choir it is, from Ed Miliband... Immoral! David Cameron... Disgusting! Rupert Murdoch himself. Deplorable! It seemed this week as if no one had a good word to say for the practice of eavesdropping on murder victims. Not even Rebecca Brooks, who I assume, as editor of the paper that paid for it, must have... No, no, apparently I'm wrong. Apparently she's totally unconnected with it and didn't know and didn't see and no one told her and she was on holiday. And anyway, she had a different name at the time, so it doesn't count. <laughs> In fact, she went so far as to say to her employees... I hope that you all realise it is inconceivable that I knew or worse, sanctioned these appalling allegations. So there you go. It's inconceivable. It actually cannot be conceived. <laughs> you can try, but you won't be able to do it. The imagination faced with the challenge of inventing some kind of crazy madcap world in which Rebecca Brooks knew where a story in the paper she edited came from just gives up. <laughs> Interesting, by the way, that I hope you realise it is inconceivable that I knew is not quite the same legally as I did not know. <laughs> And of course, that's not all. It's also being alleged that News International have in the past paid the police for information. Now, presumably, Rebecca Brooks thinks this is inconceivable as well. Certainly, when asked about it by Chris Bryant MP in 2003, she was less than candid. This is what she said. We have paid the police for information in the past. Oh, I'm sorry. I meant she was totally candid. <laughs> she told the government select committee that that illegal act is what she did. Just to remind you, the government have to decide if News International are fit and proper persons to own B Sky B. <laughs> now, to be fair, Andy Coulson was also there, and he leapt in to clarify... Uh, we operate within the code and within the law. He said, oh, within the law. Phew. Ha, that's a relief. <laughs> Out of interest, I wonder which law it was within. Because obviously it wasn't the hundred-year-old law against making or accepting payment to a police officer information collected in the course of his duty. It must be within some other law. Maybe that one about abating a smoky chimney. <laughs> anyway, something, the whole of the choir agree, was deeply wrong at the News of the World, and it happened under the editorship of Rebecca Wade. So who better to investigate it than the chief executive of News International, Rebecca Brooks? No one. No one. <laughs> No one knows Rebecca Wade better than Rebecca Brooks. <laughs> they go way back, way back. I just worry she's working too hard, poor girl. Because <laughs> she's going to have to ask herself some tough questions. She's going to have to really haul herself over for coals. And naturally, at first, she'll try to evade herself. But she knows all her tricks. And once she sees that she means business, she will crack. And before long, she'll tell her everything she knows about what she did. And she'll listen very carefully and write it all down in a little book. <laughs> The only problem is, there surely can't be anything to discover. Because after all, News International looked into all this two years ago when the first Guardian reports came out, and they told the PCC quite clearly that these were the actions of one rogue reporter and that there was no evidence anyone else at the News of the World was involved in phone hacking. By the way, did I say the government have to decide if News International <laughs> are fit and proper persons to run B Sky B? Comedy henchman Simon Greenberg was at pains to stress that News International was... ...in a fully cooperative mode with the police, as we have been since January. 
Is it me, or does that slightly raise the question of what mode they were in before January? <laughs> Although, to be fair, it is beginning to sound like their relationship with the police has for some time been very cooperative. <laughs> Almost to a fault. <laughs> but anyway, isn't it all academic now? The news of the world has gone. We won. They made the supreme sacrifice and they killed it off. Yeah, that's what they did. In other unrelated news, here's what Rebecca Brooks said on the 28th of June this year, announcing the appointment of Richard Caseby in the new role of managing editor of The Sun and the News of the World. We will take a comprehensive look at where there is common ground across our titles. Where there is common ground, we will find ways of implementing efficiencies, and where appropriate, we will find ways of introducing seven-day working. Seven-day working. A cynic might read that as evidence that News International were planning merging the papers at least a fortnight before this happened. And this announcement is just disguising a pre-made decision as sackcloth and ashes whilst clearing the way for the launch of a sun on Sunday with no baggage in which all the advertisers they've lost this week can cheerfully re-advertise with clean hands. Not to say that this isn't a huge deal with the loss of hundreds of jobs, though of course largely the jobs of people who had nothing to do with the phone hacking, rather than the job of, say, to pick an example at random, Rebecca Brooks, <laughs> who also had nothing to do with it, as we've established, but perhaps in a slightly more pointed way than some. <laughs> But it doesn't prove News International are very, very sorry. What it proves is that they really, really want B Sky B. So there we are. I've stood in front of a Radio 4 audience and I've told them that hacking into the phones of murdered children isn't very nice and nor is Rebecca Brooks, which is two things you all thought anyway. <laughs> so what was the point of that? Well, actually, I think this time there is a point. I often complain about how politicians endlessly go on about listening to the people, as if the people always speak with one voice and as if the politicians had already made up their minds what they were going to hear. But this time is different and unusual and important. This stark, undeniable wrongness of the Millie Dowler case has unified our voice, and this time, they really are listening to us. Because most of the people concerned, broadly speaking, didn't and don't want to do anything about this. Miliband didn't want to make an enemy of Murdoch yet. Cameron didn't want to have an inquiry. James Murdoch wasn't going to end the news of the world just yet, though he would have done soon. But they all changed their mind this week because we shouted louder than they expected. And now, they're waiting to see if that's enough. So... This is a moment in which I think there is actually a point to being like Tom Lehrer's protest singer and loudly making a fuss about what we all know we believe because people who didn't think we actually cared that much are listening. So let's keep it up. Let's not get distracted. Let's not fall for the paper you hated has gone behold the totally fresh and uncontaminated sun on Sunday trick. Let's keep <laughs> signing petitions, keep pestering advertisers. Let's remember no one has denied Millie Dowler's messages were listened to and deleted by a man paid by News International. Let's not forget the chief executive of that company has told the House of Commons they paid the police for information. Let's chip in with our helpful opinions about whether she and it are therefore fit and proper persons to own the largest commercial broadcaster in the country. Let's keep the pressure up, keep the chorus of disapproval going, because right now we have a rare and genuine opportunity to tell the people who influence our lives, elected or not, what sort of media ethics we're prepared to tolerate. Right now we can make a difference. Right now, if we don't lose our focus, the choir get to preach back. Thank you very much.